hello guys and welcome back to the channel so in today's video we're going to be continuing our pursuits um continuing to go through some strange qr questions as such okay so let's have a look at this one so how many radish seedlings can be planted in the radish patch if each seedling requires a 10 centimeter radius of space to grow around them so the radish patch is here and if you look it says 2.5 centimeters to 2 centimeters but that doesn't make sense because it says that it requires a 10 centimeter radius so that's where we read the abstract and it says one centimeter is 0.5 meters okay so it means that when we're drawing our diagram that this 2.5 centimeters and this two centimeters are actually scale uh not scaled up so that's our job we have to first scale them up okay so it's going to be if 2.5 centimeters is 0.5 meters we just have to do 2.5 times 0.5 so one cm is 0.5 meters we have 2 cm at the bottom here so that's just going to be one meter and then we have 2.5 centimeters so we times this by 2.5 so we times this by 2.5 um, which will give us 1.25 meters so therefore this is 1.25 meters and each seedling requires a 10 centimeter radius of space to grow around it so if you think about it it's like a circle that's taking up kind of 10 centimeters kind of in either direction so basically um yeah so just a couple of things to think about so if we we basically have to consider it on a horizontal and a vertical plane so if the radius here is 10 centimeters that means the diameter is 20 centimeters so in this one meter space you can fit five across here does that make sense and it also means if you only have one meter 25 up here and the vertical height is 20 centimeters then that means in total you can fit 125 meters divided by 0.2 meters, which is 6.25. So you can fit six full ones. Okay, so therefore up and down you can fit six. Um, so sorry, you can fit in six kind of uh, rows and like five columns if that makes sense. And so therefore the total amount of radish seedlings that can be planted is six times five, which is thirty. So the key idea here is understanding the scale factor. Okay, and understanding that a 10 centimeter radius seedling will basically be 20 centimeters in both kind of areas. Okay, great. Let's go on to the next question then. Okay, so with this question, there's kind of two ways to do this. So it says, what is the surface area of the top face of the kitchen island, excluding the appliance holes? So you can see you've got to calculate this hexagonal area and then subtract the black rectangle and the black circle. So um, I would first off start by doing the main area. Um, so you can see I've divided into a rectangle and then two adjacent smaller triangles, which I think is the best way to do it. So that's just 2 times 1.25, which is 2.5 meters. Okay. And then you can kind of see that the, um, in terms of um, the these areas here, okay, in terms of these areas here, this is basically just triangular formula, right? So the base length um, times the height. So the height here, so you can see the, the way to work out the height is if this middle bit is 2 and this additional bit all the way uh, is 2.5, then each kind of bit here must be 0 0.25 meters because it only makes sense. So 0 0.25 meters here and 0 0.25 meters here. Okay, so therefore to work out the area, it just becomes the base, which is 1.25 meters times 0 0.25 meters and then technically it's divided by two because it's a triangle, but then we have two of the same triangle on both sides. So then when we times by two, it basically cancels out. Okay, so 1.25 times 0 0.25, which becomes 0 0.3125 meters. So add these two values together and you get 2.8125 meters. And then we've got to subtract um, the rectangle and the circle. So the area of the rectangle is going to be 0 0.5 times 0 0.3, which is 0 0.15 meters squared and the area of the circle is simply pi r squared which is 3.14 times 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 which if i put into my calculator gives me 0 0.0314 okay so add these two values together which gives us 0 0.1814 and then do 2.8125 minus 0 0.81 Sorry, one eight one four, which gives us two point seven nine four three six. Wait, sorry, no, I typed that in wrong into my calculator. So it's two point six three one one. So therefore, that's two point six meters squared. Okay, so the answer here is two point six meters squared. Cool. So let's go on to the next question then. 
So the distance between camp 1 and camp 5 when traveling in a clockwise direction is approximately. So clockwise direction means we follow this kind of pursuit. And if we have a look here, I'm trying to look for something to do with linking days to time. And if you say here, it says journeys are measured in days. One day's journey covers 15 kilometers. So you go three days plus one, four, plus seven, plus three is seven, plus two is nine days. So nine days, which, and it says one day uh, is 15 kilometers. So nine days divided by 15 kilometers per day is going to equal 135 kilometers. Okay, so this wasn't wasn't necessarily too bad. I don't think it was just about um, specifically looking at um, the information that they've given us. Okay, so the answer here is 135 um, kilometers. Okay, cool. Let's go on to the next question. Then. The shortest distance between camp six and base camp is approximately. So camp six and base camp, the shortest distance is going to be this kind of um Hypo uh, this hypotenuse here, right? So we're going to have to use Pythagoras. But importantly, it's like, how do we figure out what these values are? Well, you can see this is three days. This is three days. This total up here is six days, but then this over here is four days. That means this distance here must just be two days. Okay, and we can use a similar principle here. So if this is one day and this is two days, this whole thing must be three days. So this must be one day. OK, so um, what we can do is we can convert those into kind of kilometers now. So if I redraw out my triangle, so you've got 15 kilometers here, you've got 30 kilometers here. So from here, it's just a simple Pythagoras equation. 15 squared plus 30 squared square rooted gives us 33.541 dot, 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 which is 34 kilometers. OK, so the answer is C. So I don't necessarily think it was... A difficult maths but it's probably the interpretation i think that's the key idea with a lot of these questions it's the interpretation and um, that can often mess people up okay on to the next question then so a single sledge team sets out on a one-way journey from base camp in a clockwise direction following the route the sledge is packed with 150 kg of essential supplies the last camp it can reach up before the supplies are used up so a single sledge team is two dogs and a human dog handler it says each sledge carries a maximum load of 150. Essential supplies for a four-day journey are this amount. So for a four-day journey, we need 40 kg for the handler, because the single sledge team is two dogs and a handler, as well as 20 kg for the dogs, right? Because we have two dogs. So for four, four days, we need 60 kg. So per day, we need 15 kg. And since we have 150 kg, that means we have 10 days available. Okay, so we have 10 days to work with here. Okay, so the last camp it can reach before the supplies are used up is. So we start with base camp and we have 10 days. So we get to here, we have eight days left. Get to here, we have five days left. Get to here, we have four days left. Get to here, we have one day left and we can't make it to camp five. So the last camp it can reach before the supplies are used up is D camp four. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. So you can see here, kind of once again, it's just about following the relevant piece of information. You don't necessarily need to read everything um, in terms of what's not important or what's needed, not needed, etc., etc. Um, it's just about uh, in, in ensuring that you write down all of, or you try and zone in and focus in on the relevant information where possible. Okay, great. Okay, so on to the next question then. So this question is quite a tricky one. So someone asked if there was a potentially faster way to do something like this. Um, I don't necessarily think so. I think um, I'll try and go through what I think is the fastest way. I mean, that probably is potentially a faster way, but not that I can see. Um, and especially it makes things a little bit more complicated because there are like windows and doors you have to exclude, etc., etc., etc. Okay, so, um, yeah, so let's have a look at this question. So it says, the buyer of the apartment wishes the walls to be painted before he moves in. To the nearest pound, how much will the paint cost? Okay, so you've got the bathroom, bedroom, combined kitchen, and living area. So you can see here, the walls of the apartment are 2.3 meters tall. So what you kind of need to do is you kind of need to work out kind of almost like the perimeter uh, and then multiply it up, if that makes sense. Okay, so if we take it um, bit by bit then, okay, so with the first one, um, so it says... If we read the bedroom as a square, so that means that this is five meters here, and then this must also be five meters here. Okay, so that means this area of the bathroom is going to be four meters, 
and it means that this is going to be seven meters this could be five meters i'm just putting some values on here so just a couple of things so for example for the bathroom therefore the total perimeter is going to be five plus five plus four plus four which is 18 because what i'm trying to work out is so if you imagine you've got a, a room like this so this room is basically like a, a cuboid or something i'm just trying to work out what the total area you need to cover here and then kind of dropping it down which is what i'll do when i times by the 2.3 Okay, so if you guys are unsure about what I'm talking about, perhaps it might be good to go to my geometry video where I talk about um, a slightly faster way for doing surface area. And this is kind of a similar idea to that, I guess. Okay, so it's 18, um, 10, 4, 18. And then for the bathroom and then for the bedroom, it's going to be four lots of five, which is 20. And then for the kitchen, it's going to be 12, 24 meters. Okay, and then obviously all of these we're going to have to times by the 2.3 as such. Okay, so if we take all these numbers and we add them together so and then times by the 2.3, we will get, so 18 plus 20 plus 24 times 2.3, we will get 142.6 meters squared. Okay, but we're not really near our answer yet because um, we have a little bit more to do in the sense that we haven't mentioned any of the doors or the windows or anything like that, right? So it says here, every door is 0 0.9 to 1.8 and there's three doors. So 0 0.9 times 1.8 times three. So the doors is 4.86. So this is not being, is not being uh, painted. And everyone must have, uh, every room must have one window of one times 1 1.5. So windows is one times 1 1.5 times three, which is 4.5 meters squared. So you can subtract this. And you will get 4.86 minus 4.5. You get 133.24 meters squared. Okay. And then it tells us paint can be bought per liter at cost of £4.30. One liter, it costs, covers 9.4 meters. So if you divide this by 9.4, you figure out how many liters you need which is 14.17 dot, 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 which will, um, yeah, and then so, and then if you multiply this, so this is a weird one, I guess, because um, I'm not sure if you can buy it, it says per litre, but does that mean you have to only buy it in litres? Well, I'm going to, basically what you would do is, if it said to the like nearest full pound or whatever, then it might be a little bit different, but um, what you would essentially have to do here is, either go with 15 litres or just multiply this number by £4.30. So I, I guess here, if I just multiplied it by £4.30, I'll end up with £60.95, okay? And it does say to the nearest pound how much will it cost, so £61, I guess. Um, but, yeah, I think in terms of the way that you are meant to do it, I'm not sure. I mean, obviously, I would just compare the answers and see which one, um, what they'd like us to do here. But you can see here, it wasn't necessarily the most difficult. I think doing it like this definitely speeds things up, but it's just about trying to take it as logically as possible, basically. Um, and when you do it bit by bit, um, definitely makes things way, way easier, as you can see. Okay, so, um, yeah, so I hope this video was helpful. Um, I know that we basically just covered a couple of QR questions here, but these are ones that have been sitting in, in the document for quite a while now. So thank you as always for watching and for all of your support. And um, please do let me know what you would like to see next. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next video.